Hello and welcome to EuroFootball Daily, where today we're looking at some of the strangest transfers in football history. From kits to paint to a pile of seafood, these players swap clubs for some of the weirdest fees you can imagine. Let's jump in. 10 and 9, John Barnes and Gary Pallister. We kick off not with a joint deal, but with two former England internationals. John Barnes was best known for a decade spent with Liverpool, where his tricky runs from the left wing saw him win two titles, as well as the league's Player of the Year award in 1988. Pallister meanwhile turned out for rivals Man United as a centre-back, partnering Steve Bruce and earning four Premier League medals, while he too was elected as the best player in the division by his peers in 1990. Between them they would earn 101 caps for England, Barnes responsible for 79 of those, but oddly they both began their careers in similar fashion. Barnes was born in Jamaica to a high-ranking army officer, and from the beginning was destined for sporting greatness. Named after the great Welsh forward John Charles, Barnes's natural athleticism was encouraged by his father, who had captained the Jamaican national football team and even brought together Jamaica's first bobsled team, whose appearance at the 1988 Olympics would later prove the inspiration for the film Cool Runnings. Barnes and his family moved to London when he was 12, and his playground football soon led to a place with local side Sudbury Town in the Middlesex League. It was a good place to get noticed, and Barnes's electric pace and skill were unmissable, eventually impressing Watford in a reserve match. The Hornets were keen to thrash out a deal to secure their man, and ended up buying Sudbury a new pair of kits to bring Barnes to Vicarage Road. They would later sell him on to Liverpool for £900,000. Pallister meanwhile started out at non-league Billingham in the North East. A Middlesbrough fan as a boy, he thought he had missed his chance to represent them when he was still playing amateur football at 19. But with an unfulfilling career in the lower reaches of the footballing pyramid beckoning, he was spotted by Borough at last, and the Teesiders approached Billingham with an offer. It must have seemed like magic, except for the fee, which ended up coming to a few kits, some balls and a net. Still, Pallister didn't look back, and five years later he arrived at Old Trafford, Alex Ferguson paying £2.3 million for his signature, then the highest fee ever paid by an English club. He would go on to play over 300 times for the Red Devils before returning to borrow for £2.5 million in 1998. Billingham did not receive a sell-on bonus. We hope those kits were good. 8. Franco De Santo Before we move on to our next section, just a quick reminder to subscribe to EuroFootball Daily and hit that notification bell to never miss one of our top 10s. You probably remember Argentinian striker Franco De Santo from his time with Chelsea, Wigan or Schalke. Though he never made the impression on global football you might have expected from his teenage nicknames of Little Crespo and the new Maradona. Now 31, the only trophies to his name are two FA Cups, and though he scored just 67 career goals, six fewer than former teammate and centre-back Naldo, he has somehow earned three caps for his country, not far off Mauro Icardi's eight. But his path to the Prem was remarkable, even if his performances there were not. De Santo made his name in his early teens for local club Tiro Suizo, where his 6 foot 4 frame and pace quickly caught the eye of scouts for larger sides. But rather than stay in Argentina, the 17 year old De Santo opted to try his luck abroad, signing for Chile inside Audax Italiano, who refused to cough up any cash for him, instead playing Tiro with 12 footballs, 2 nets and 40 litres of paint for the training ground. Three years later, De Santo moved to Chelsea for £4 million and would go on to feature in three of the top five leagues. Tiro Suizo never saw a penny. 7. Ernie Blekinsop If De Santo's transfer proves football can still be weird today, it's still much less odd than it used to be. Ernie Blekinsop, a name which couldn't sound more made up, was born in Cudworth outside Barnsley in 1902 and began his football career playing in midfield for the village side, supplementing the income he earned working in a coal mine, a job he started at 13 years old. Fortunately for Blekinsop, his talents lay at ground level, shining in the district league and reaching the final of the local cup in 1921. That brought scouts to Cudworth, and interest from both Doncaster Rovers and Hull City must have had the club licking their lips at the prospect of a big payday. Smartly, Hull knew it would take more than cash to get the deal done, and they offered Cudworth a fee of £100 for Blekinsop before throwing in a barrel of beer, roughly 80 pints worth, as a sweetener. It clearly did the job, and Blekinsop himself was given a £10 signing on fee and £5 a week to make the switch to the East Coast. He would play only 11 times for Hull before Sheffield Wednesday snapped him up converting Blekinsop to a left-back, where he would go on to feature 400 times, helping the Owls rise from the bottom of the second division to back-to-back top-flight champions. He later played for Liverpool and earned 26 caps for England, capturing his country on five occasions. 6. Walter Restrepo 
Once the American top flight, attracting stars like Pele, Beckenbauer and Johan Cruyff, the NASL is now the second division of US soccer. Though the lack of promotion and relegation in the league system means teams have no hope of reaching the riches on offer in the MLS. The consequence is some weird transfers, as in the case of Walter Restrepo switched from Fort Lauderdale Strikers to the San Antonio Scorpions back in 2014. A tricky midfielder capable of playing wide or in the hole, Restrepo was born in California, but began his career in Colombia before switching to Florida side Fort Lauderdale, who once had George Best on their books in 2011. He netted a 30-yard screamer on his debut and would go on to contribute 22 goals in 55 games for the Strikers by 2013 attracting interest from Texan outfit San Antonio. However, Restrepo was a risk, coming off an ACL injury, so the Scorpions put together an imaginative deal for him, offering Fort Lauderdale free hotels and transport in exchange for the player. But there were conditions. The deal only applied to Fort Lauderdale's games in San Antonio, and their accommodation would only be covered for the second night of each trip, leaving them paying for the first. For some reason, the strikers agreed, and Restrepo helped San Antonio to the title that year. But Fort Lauderdale arguably got the better deal, with the ex-player never settling and moving a further seven times over the next five years. 5. Collins John Once at Fulham, Collins John played for 11 clubs in six different countries, as well as winning the 2006 Under-21 Euros with the Netherlands. A forward born in Liberia, John and his family moved to the small Dutch town of Neerverdal when he was a child, following the civil war in his homeland. He quickly established himself as a top prospect, courting interest from FC Twente by the age of 17. Nirvidal could have demanded a big fee for the star, but as a local side wanted to do something special to help the community, they instead requested that Twente donated a set of encyclopedias and learning materials to a local school. John went on to make his debut in the Eredivisie that year, netting one in three during his time with the club and earning two caps for the national side before Fulham swooped, offering 600,000 for the then 19-year-old. In an attempt to be funny, Fulham asked their former player, the reverse name John Collins, to present the youngster at Craven Cottage on his arrival. But there would be few other enjoyable moments in his career, as John left in 2008 after 20 goals in five seasons, later appearing in Belgium, Iran and Azerbaijan, before retiring at 29 years old in 2014. 4. Hugh McLenahan Ernie Bleckensop wasn't the only player in the 1920s who switched clubs for some groceries. Hugh McLenahan was a Manchester boy who started out with Blackpool as a halfback, the forerunner of the modern midfielder, and he rose like a rocket, swapping the Seasiders for Stockport at just 18 years old. The Hatters had fallen on hard times, and their new star was the only bright spot as they languished in the third tier, facing a fine and a points deduction for fielding an ineligible player. But Stockport's predicament was Manchester United's opportunity. When the Minnows held a fair to raise funds for the side, United scout and fixer Lewis Rocker saw a chance to sign up the young talent on the cheap. Rocker, who had claimed that he had come up with the name Manchester United when the team ditched old moniker Newton Heath, came from a family of Italian gelato makers, and promised Stockport that if they cancelled McLennan's contract, he would give them a freezer full of ice cream to sell at their fair. Rather than just asking for the cash, Stockport agreed, and McLennan joined the Red Devils, where he would spend the next nine years. His time at the club was ultimately cut short by the Second World War, but Rocker would become indispensable to the club, serving as assistant manager, chief scout and later bringing Matt Busby to Old Trafford as coach. And it all started with ice cream. 3. Jimmy Greaves The highest goal scorer ever in the English top flight, Jimmy Greaves was born in London, and except for six months at AC Milan, spent his whole career in the capital and in Essex, turning out for Chelsea, West Ham and Spurs. A lethal striker who was part of England's World Cup winning squad in 1966, Greaves never won the league, but picked up a pair of FA Cups with the Lillywhites, as well as netting an incredible 266 goals for the club in nine years, an average of 30 a season. But Greaves' journey to Spurs was as remarkable as his achievements with them. A Chelsea Academy graduate, he hit 132 goals in four campaigns at Stamford Bridge, but could only win the FA Youth Cup and Milan came calling in 1961, paying £80,000 for his services. His salary was £140 a week, then considered generous, but Greaves hated leaving London and the strict methods of Rosaneri boss Nerio Rocco, even trying to cancel the move after the contract was signed and forcing his way out of Italy after just 12 appearances and 9 goals in Serie A. Tottenham quickly put together a deal, but fearful for Greaves' mental state, paid £99,999 for him instead of rounding it to £100,000 reasoning that the pressure of making him the first six-figure player in the English game might affect his performances. In the end, the best they would do with Greaves was a second-place finish, 
but he went on to establish himself as one of the greatest forwards in the history of the club and country. 2. Kenneth Christensen Few fans will remember the playing career of former Norwegian forward Kenneth Christensen, but one tale from his time in the game is unforgettable. In 2002, Christensen was playing for Vidbart in the third tier and was on fire, racking up 14 goals by September and attracting attention from around the division. His suitors included Flowey, then chasing promotion, and they made their interest known to Christensen, offering him a chance to build a lasting career in the sport. Then an ambitious 23-year-old Christensen asked his club to let him leave, and chairman Vidar Alston, not wanting to stand in the way of the player, agreed to thrash out a deal. However, when he met with the Flowey hierarchy, it became clear that money was tight, and an alternative payment would have to be found, and we're still not sure why they came up with the idea of seafood. Apparently, it took only a short meeting for the clubs to agree that Flowey would pay Viedbart Christensen's weight in shrimp, and a public weigh-in was announced, with Christensen placed on one side of a set of scales, while a pile of prawns was deposited on the other. When the tally came to around 170 pounds, or 77 kilograms, Flowey president Rolf Gultmussen was quoted as saying, no problem, we have enough shrimp, and all parties went away happy. Good thing no one suggested the same transfer fee for Akin Fenwa. 1. Ian Wright Ian Wright's path to success is one of football's best feel-good stories. The striker who was rejected by Southend and Brighton as a teenager began his career in his native South London, but earned just £30 a week from the game until the age of 21, once even spending two weeks in prison for driving without insurance when he couldn't afford the fees. Eventually, he devoted less and less time to sport, working as a plasterer to pay the bills, but when he moved to semi-pro outfit Greenwich Borough in 1985, his fortunes changed. A Crystal Palace scout was ticked off about the talented young forward blowing amateur rivals away, and after a trial, he was given an initial three-month contract, which took him up until his 22nd birthday. Palace thanked Greenwich for their discovery by paying them the princely fee of a set of weights for the club gym. It must have been sickening, as within six years Wright had become a three lines international and one of the country's most feared finishers, joining Arsenal for a club record £2.5 million in 1991. Wright never took his success for granted, working relentlessly to maximise his talent. He finished as the top flight's top scorer in 1992 and would go on to earn 33 caps for the three lines and win a title under Arsene Wenger in 1998. He remains among the top 20 scorers in the history of the Premier League, and it all began with a set of dumbbells. So guys, that's all we've got time for on 10 players who move for weird transfer fees. What did you guys think of that shrimp story? Absolutely mental. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to EuroFootball Daily, and I'll see you next time. Bye!